Kufanya Tayari. That's right. It's the season of Kufanya Tayari. Well, in Swahili, it means to make ready. Swahili is the 12th most spoken language in the world, so we're going to get you to be very intercontinental and very much so in the worldly aspect of knowledge. Say it with me. Kufanya Tayari. Kufanya Tayari. To make ready. Now, growing up in Kenya, those see, that season of dusk and darkness would always be a time when people had to say, let's get the lights ready. Let's get the lamps. Where's everything that we need to prepare for the darkness? Seven o'clock in equatorial Africa. It would be as if God pulled the shade down instantly. You could say there wasn't a, a slow sun setting on the equator. It was almost like, bam, there it goes. So get ready was the key thing. To get ready for the darkness, to prepare in any way whatsoever, would mean scrambling across your hut, getting ready, finding your little tin cans that you may have had with a fine little piece of cloth twisted as a wick, preparing the oil, making sure there was enough in there. For some who may have been a little bit more wealthy, finding that battery-operated fluorescent light that was going to illuminate your hut and get everything ready and maybe illuminate even more so the village area around. For those who may have been a little more sophisticated, it was making sure that the light switches would work and that the extra generator was there because it wasn't always that the electricity would be working and at nighttime, it wasn't always something that you could just expect to happen that you could flip the switch. So everything was in preparation. Hufanya Tayari. That was really important. Let's make ready. Let's make ready. Let's do everything we can to be prepared. Now, that word preparation simply means these wonderful things. Make arrangements, planning, preparatory measures, taking necessary steps, groundwork, gearing up. All these things describe the season that we're in. It's the season of Advent. It's the season of Kufanya Tayari. It's the season to make ready, to make ready within our spiritual lives and how important it is. For the beautiful symbolism of this time of the year, as the ancients saw the days growing and growing, growing long, uh, the night growing longer and the days growing shorter, what it meant was we've got to get ready for the light. What did that mean to them? It meant the end of this long, drawn out season we may call fall or the season where plants were harvested and crops were harvested and the end of a growing time to awaken to a new time of growth, to awaken, to look beyond the darkness, but we're getting ready for when everything turns around. And as the winter solstice happens, we're very excited because everything's going to change. Suddenly the days will start getting longer and the nights shorter, and we're moving more towards the season of growth and development. So it is in our own lives, a spiritual time, a time of getting ready for more light to be revealed within our lives getting ready for the spring of spiritual growth to take place within our lives, getting ready for new things to be birthed within us in the journey of our life. For humanity has learned how to serve the darkness or survive it, I should say, by bringing in the light. And we know that we will face darkness within our life, but we survive it as we make ready the spiritual light within our lives. Now here in America, Advent season truly is a time of getting ready. Some of you actually started Advent, I think, at Halloween. I mean, it was like the season of getting ready for Christmas. I know we've seen the postings of very humbly. There are 10 trees. You had to start weeks ahead uh, of, of the Advent season in your home. If you've seen the pictures, beautiful pictures of nativity scenes. All over. Is there one in the bathroom, one in the kitchen, one in the hallway, one in the stairway? Everywhere you go, he has crushed it. Uh, if you get that crush is the word for nativity. Okay, he crushed it. He has all kinds of trees and decorations and villages stacked up on shelves. And it's just a season of getting ready to celebrate. But more than just to celebrate a baby born in a manger, more than just to celebrate a season when shepherds came to a, to a simple inn, to that to that wonderful manger setting. Uh, it's more than that. It has a deeper meaning for our lives within our spiritual journey because it is a celebration of new light to be found within our own lives every single day. 
Christmas is not just December 25th. It's meant to be celebrated every day of our lives. And so we understand that that's the unfolding. We're getting ready in a new awareness of light that's shining and radiating within and around our lives. Many of you have been so busy decorating that you have uh, all these wonderful outdoor decorations in your yards and it almost look like Christmas threw up everywhere. You know, it's all these inflatables that are deflatable that don't look so good. And when the daylight is uh, on and then at nighttime, everything pops up into life, you know, those inflatable nativity scenes that Mary and Joseph are floating along and then all of a sudden shh, someone hits the switch and they disappear and then they inflate again and uh, all these kind of wonderful things that we see out of our yards. This is the season of preparation, having very good fun. Baking, baking, baking. How many of you are already baking and getting ready? All right, cookies galore, treats and all kinds of good things. And then, of course, we have the infamous Black Friday where there's shopping in midnight, or should I say shoving for gifts instead of shopping for gifts, because it seems like that's what it's all about. But today we want to awaken more within our lives, more than all these physical things that we're talking about. We're talking about making ready inside. Something more awaits us. Something great awaits us. We need to ufanya tayari, get ready. So now the story of the birth of Jesus is filled with all kinds of wonderful aspects, but one that is quite often forgotten is the precursor to Jesus' birth is the very story of the birth of John the Baptist setting the environment there. There's this wonderful proclamation that you read today. John the Baptist, not being a Baptist by denomination, but a baptizer, so we may refer to him as John the Baptizer, lest you think he was a Baptist. Uh, that is not true, okay? So uh, when we find here that John the Baptizer, born as a baby, his father proclaimed, yes, you, my child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to Ufanyataya, to make ready, to make ready his ways. So we know that every story is our story. And we look at every biblical character as our uh, unfolding of our own journey of our life. You are the baby John the Baptist. You are baby John the Baptizer. You are the one called to Ufanyataya, called to, to make ready. The very waves of God unfolding within your life, in you, through you, around you, and for you. So this preparation work is really important within us. It's essential to prepare because we want to celebrate this light that's within us. We want to celebrate this new unfolding of awareness that's within us and it's taking place. We want to celebrate the potential of what is ahead yet to unfold for us in an upcoming year. It all begins wrapped up in this wonderful spirit of making ready. For if the light symbolized by the life and teachings of Jesus is this light we celebrate, then the light is this Christ awareness or Christ consciousness. And if it's going to shine, well, we've got to make ready. If it's going to shine at all, if it's going to radiate at all, we've got to prepare. Just like those in equatorial Africa, it's to get things ready, get everything all in line, get things lined up because the dusk is here and the sun is setting and the darkness is upon us. We've got to be in this season of preparation. And all of Scripture has been trying to teach this. It's not just the Christmas story. We find the story of the ten virgins. Story of a bridegroom wedding experience in the ancient times of the Eastern culture of biblical time and, and day, it would be the bridegroom who would go to prepare for the wedding feast, making everything ready. I'm sorry, we got it twisted here in America. It seems like the bride is doing all the wedding planning, but in Eastern culture, it was the bridegroom who's making everything ready for the wedding feast, making all those choices. It must have been a gay man who would choose that aubergine and all these wonderful uh, blush and pink flowers and all these tablecloths and all these things that would go on, but making ready for the wonderful feast that was about to take place. And there were in this story ten virgins, five who were prepared and five unprepared, five who had said, I am waiting and prepared for, we know not when this wonderful moment will come when the bridegroom say, hurry, hurry, everybody, it's all ready, come to the feast, I've got it all planned, everything's all laid out, the menu's already completed, decorations are up, everything's already come and celebrate together. Now that may have taken some time. So. 
the virgins knew that it may take some time for the bridegroom. So we've got to tarry and wait and wait and wait. And sometimes it was midnight or early morning before the bridegroom would say, everything is ready, let us feast. And quickly when they heard the bridegroom call, say, come, the wedding is ready. Everybody began to trim their lamps. Come, 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 because they were going to create this wonderful procession of lights lit as they moved forward, everyone bringing forth their lamps. And there were others who were not prepared. And they were those who said, wait a minute, can I borrow some oil from you? My, wait a minute, my lamp's not working right. My wick hasn't been trimmed. Uh, I'm having all kinds of problems here. I, I, I need to have some help here. Can, can I borrow from you? Can I get from you? And many of the others would say, simply, you need to go and get your own. We have for ourselves, but you need to find for yourself this. Beautiful spiritual teaching in our own lives. For the symbolism there within the story is we know that the goodness of God is ever preparing a feast for us. A feast of knowledge, a feast of understanding, a feast of infinite possibilities. Every day, the goodness of God is, I'm preparing a wonderful banquet for you. And are you ready for it? Are you ready to receive all the goodness that has, I've prepared? Oh, if you're waiting, and if you're kufanya tayari, making ready, when the Spirit says, now is the moment, come, engage, come, partake, come, celebrate, come, receive all the goodness that has been prepared and is unfolding for you. Oh, but some of us have not made ready, and we're not ready. And so we don't have the oil of new understanding, oil of understanding for us, beautiful and very symbolic. We see this wonderful illustration of oil. The shepherd would anoint the sheep with oil. And we're thinking, dumping oil all over the wool? What's, what's that all about? You see, what happens is in the ancient time, when the shepherd anointed the ears of the sheep with oil, it kept the bugs out. So the sheep could hear the shepherd's voice. You see how important it is that we have the oil of new understanding, that we too can hear the very voice of God. You see the beautiful metaphor and symbolism unfolding forth. Is your oil ready? Do you have enough oil? Have you gained enough uh, bread of new, uh, new understanding, oil of new understanding? Have you gained enough of this that you're prepared? Are you stocked up and ready? Because when the Spirit says, I'm ready to unfold something magnificent, you're going, magnificent? How? When? Where? I I'm not ready. I I I good blessings, uh, bestowing prosperity, health, and all these wonderful things that God wants to unfold in my life. I I'm just not ready for it. Please, can, can you come back tomorrow? Can you try another time? And the bridegroom would move on with those who are ready. Those who have the oil, in this case, a metaphor of oil of understanding. And their wick is trimmed. How important it is that we understand this in anyone who's had a, one of those beautiful kerosene lamps, hurricane lamps. You know how it is if the wick is too much? It's very smoky, isn't it? And suddenly the glass is clouded up and there's no clarity because the wick hasn't been trimmed to a proper height. And it smokes up the glass. It smokes up everything. You can even find it on some candles. When the wick is too tall, it will be very smoky and smoke fill up the room, cloud the room, and there's not the clarity that we're looking for. So it is this beautiful lesson is saying, you if your lamps are ready, have you trimmed your wick? Is it that you've sought the clarity of God in all things and read? Then you will hear when the bridegroom calls, when the Spirit of God is calling a blessing and unfolding with the new light of Christmas, shall we say, or the new light of the new year, the new understanding comes and it's ready to unfold. Well, are you ready to understand it? And do you have the clarity that's so important for our lives? You see, Kufanya Tayari. We've got to be ready. We've got to make ready within our lives. We must spend time getting ready for what really matters. How many of you can ever remember you may have made a mistake in school? And the teacher said, everyone, there's going to be a test on chapter 10, and you heard chapter 5. And so you read chapter 5, and you didn't read chapter 10. You study, but you didn't study for what matters. And when the test came, you were totally unprepared, 
totally unprepared for what really matters in life and what really mattered in this moment and what really mattered in the testing experience. And sometimes in life, we're so busy making ready, but not making ready for things that really matter within our life. Let me tell you this, beautiful Christmas decorations will fade and fall away. Some of them will tarnish. Some of them will be broken year after year in packing. Some things will not always be. We can put all kinds of things uh, out in our life of preparation and get caught up in the holiday and miss the whole meaning and purpose. But understanding of what's unfolding for our lives is a time of greater awareness. Not just a baby born, not just a manger, not a celebration of a birthday, not a celebration of, you know, just uh, something happening in medieval times, but even our, our ancient Middle Eastern times. But it is a celebration of the truth unfolding within our lives in the midst of our darkest moments. And that's what sustains us. When life gives us the darkest moments, illness, sadness, loss of job, some sort of tragedy or challenge coming in your family, your home, and your relationships. In those moments, we know that when we are prepared, there is a light that unfolds for us, a dawning that says, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. There is a light that shines a radiance that says, all things are possible with God. There is a light that shines and radiates within our lives that says, through Christ, there is the strength that I need to endure all things, to go through all things. And the very power and presence of love enables me to do exactly what I need to do in each every moment. So our preparation is this for a wonderful understanding. The bridegroom is calling at any moment. An understanding that wonderful spirit of God is calling at any moment. Are we ready to receive? Are we ready in our moments of darkness? To illuminate the light. Now, preparation was what it's all about. Well, preparation begins in our spiritual life and requires us to prepare our own spirit, to spiritualize our being. That means taking authority over the ego and all of this crazy stuff, pride, and all the stuff that wants to rise within us. We need to take authority over it. These things may keep us in stuck in repetitive cycles of negativity and uh, reactive behaviors. And what we have to do in this getting ready experience is sit yourself down and ask yourself, what's going on here? And now tell yourself, honey, you got to be in charge. It's as simple as that. Getting ready says, honey, you got to be in charge of all the things. Your spiritual life, are you in charge of it? Or are you letting everyone else be in charge of it? Are you letting the circumstances of your world be in charge of it? Are you letting feelings and emotions or things that people say or don't say? Oh, I mean, Lord, I've had so many people say, I'm leaving the church because of what someone else did. What? You're leaving the church because of what someone else did? So they're now in charge of your spiritual life and development? Wow, I thought you were in charge. It's time to sit yourself down and say, honey, you're in charge. It's time that you take care of your own life. You're the one in charge. First Peter chapter 1, 13 says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you in the revelation of Jesus the Christ. Prepare your mind. Be in charge. Take charge. Sit yourself down and begin this spiritual preparation. I want to prepare my spiritual life. I want to prepare my soul and spirit to receive the highest and best in this. For this preparation then is simply an activation and an integration of this wonderful Christ awareness, Christ consciousness. You know, we say this in our classes, you got the mind of Christ, now use it. You got the mind of Christ, now use it. What does that simply mean? It means, you know what, God has given you this wonderful insight, this wonderful awareness, this wonderful consciousness. You have a mind. Take charge of it. Let it unfold the highest and best. Take this wonderful Christ consciousness and activate it. Put it to work to say, I know that I know that I know that I know within my heart and spirit, all things are working together and this is my consciousness and I activate it. 
and then I integrate it into my daily life. It's part of how I live. Our spiritual preparation then is making sure that this consciousness is every single day experience. I am expanding my awareness. I am broadening this wonderful consciousness. I am turning up the light and allowing it to radiate even more from within me. For this Christ consciousness is this higher soul. It's who we are. It's that wonderful thing within you that kind of says, I know better. How many of you have ever been at that moment where you go, I just did this. I know better. I know I shouldn't have done that. There's just something within us that's a knower that says, I know I can live at a higher level. I know better. I know what to say. I know what I should have done. I know I should how I should act. I know this. Well, how do you know this? Because, well, your knower knows. It's your Christ consciousness. It's the awareness within you of your highest and best. And it resides within you in a vibrating dimension really resides within you in a way that it's like a frequency vibrating within you. Because what of our, our wonderful aspect of our work of preparation is that we want to raise these vibrational frequencies of our emotions and our mental and physical body. We want to raise it up. Preparation is that. I'm getting ready. I'm raising my consciousness. I'm raising up this vibration. And you may say, well, wait a minute. How? 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 Oh, I'm glad you asked. Great, here's how. I'm going to tell you exactly how. How do we raise this vibrational level within our lives? How do we raise it up in consciousness? How do we bring it forth? How do we bring it up to the surface to its highest level? Meditation. Meditation. That beautiful passage is be still and know. You know, when we are most prepared is when we know our material. We're most prepared when we're familiar with our material, right? And this earlier I mentioned as a student, if you've read chapter 10, then you were most prepared for the test on chapter 10 because you prepared to know. So how do we know God within? Well, it's not by making noise because we can't learn anything in the midst of noise. How many of you have said, turn that TV down, I'm, or, I'm, I'm trying to listen to this uh, conversation, or please stop talking because I'm trying to listen to the TV. You know, we've been in both of those places where we're trying to say, hush, 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 hush. I'm trying to listen. Yet in our prayer life, sometimes we uh, are really more about uh, talking about, you know, talking at God, to God in such a way. It's like going on a date and I want to get to know you. But first, let me tell you all about me, what I need and what I think you should do. And we think that's our prayer life. Trust me, that's not going to get you anywhere in your dating experience. Because it's more about, hi, I'm going to shut up now and I want to know about you. You Tell me about you. But we think, well, I'm going to get to know you, but first I'm going to tell you all about me. And this is helping me getting to know you because I'm going to tell you what you should do. And I think we're going to get to know each other really well when I tell you what I need you to do for me. Okay? And that's not a good dating experience. And it's not a good prayer experience. Because the scripture says, be quiet. If you want to know, be quiet. If you want to know, Listen, meditation has been part of world religions, and we find it in Buddhist traditions. We find it in Islamic tradition. Meditation is part of Judaism, and it's part of Christianity. What? Isn't that kind of an Eastern thing? Oh, well, you know, I didn't grow up with meditation. I know I didn't. In fact, my mother and father said, don't be caught meditating. You know, when your mind is still, it'll be the tool of the devil. You got to keep that mind going, racing, 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 constantly. Beseeching God, beseeching God. Storm the gates of heaven. Constantly be talking at God because if your mind gets quiet, you know the devil will enter in. All kinds of things will come into you. You know they're going to try you to be still and let you engage. You see, they knew nothing about meditation, unfortunately. Unfortunately, they didn't understand the power of prayer, and it's described very clearly within Scripture. Scripture says in prayer. It's describing meditation says, go into your prayer closet, okay? The closet is not a room, and we here at City of Light are big about coming out of the closet. Anyway, we wouldn't be advocating you to go in a closet. We would love for you to come out of the closet. We're trying to say to you, simply go into the closet, which is your inner being. Go within you. And how do you best go in? 
by being still. And then it says, shut the door. How do you get the door to be shut? By being still. Being in that meditation experience. It says, I am still and I'm quiet. And I'm allowing spirit to speak to me. Be still and know is really this beautiful passage of the ancients trying to unfold us to understand. If you want to raise your vibrational level and you want to get prepared for something wonderful to happen in your life, begin with this power of meditation, of centering your life in the divine presence. Through this process of meditation, this process of being still, what happens? We actually slow down. Science says this. We slow down our sympathetic nervous system. Wow. Science is telling us what prayer does. Well, prayer already knew and was trying to tell science that. All that nerves and all that stress, as you're in stillness, as you're in quiet, it allows it to slow down the nervous system. And it allows you to shut off that monkey mind in your head that's going, yuck, 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 Constantly going with all kinds of ideas. But what about this? And have you done this? And what do you mean about this? And how are we going to do this? And you can't do this. This is impossible. This is crazy. What are you thinking? That's, right. That's that monkey mind. That's going on. And along with that, you're able to access the higher aspects of yourself, of the divine within you. You gain a greater clarity for your soul's lessons. And you begin to evolve in and through those soul's lessons as you in stillness allow the divine, to speak. To be loving of one means that I'm going to be still and allow you to talk, right? Have you ever been with those people who all they do is talk at you? Mm -hmm. And with those, a lot of times we find people who are just talk, 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 and we go, ah, uh, hey, great, um, I gotta go. Uh, let me catch you later. You know, uh, really great, it was wonderful, but you know, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, great to see you, you know, because uh, all they're doing is talking at you. And you try to get a word in. You try to engage. It's not a conversation. It's someone talking at you. Can you imagine how the universe feels when all we do is prayer and we're like, and another thing, God, and I don't think you know this. And Lord, I've been trying to tell you this. And Lord, you don't seem to understand. And you, I would like you to do this for me. And because you're not doing it right for me, I want it this way. And I want you to manifest it this way. And this is what I'm all. And like the Spirit of God says, would you just be quiet? You really want to know something. You really want to learn. You really want to experience. Listen. Center. I've always been unfolding insight and wisdom into your life. So what happens is when we are in preparation, we begin with this wonderful thing to say, what am I thinking? What's dominating my mind? If I'm going to raise this vibrational level, I've got to ask myself, what am I thinking? Because thoughts are things. And thoughts are vibrational frequencies that are like unseen radio frequencies. How many of you have seen a radio frequency? You know, you're dialing to, you know, 94.9, and you're trying to get in that right country and western station. I know you all love, uh, you know, so you can get your groove on, and, you know, you're dialing. How many of you have seen the radio waves? Nobody. We can't see them. But we know they're there. Thoughts are radiating out like radio waves. And they have the ability to attract to us, bring to us those things that we put out there. For the scripture says, as a man or woman thinks, so they are. We see the scripture saying, according to your belief, as according to what you think, so shall you receive. And the reason the vibrational thought or emotional level is so important is because it's going to keep manifesting for you, bringing to you, attracting to you, when you even when you stop focusing on your intentions. It continues to draw. You may set forth a particular thought, and you may say, I thought this, I thought, I'm a failure. I thought I'm sick. I thought I'm poor. And even though you don't engage in it, you put that thought out there. And it's like a radio wave that's going out and it tracks like a magnet to it. All those things that you've just been putting out there. So our spiritual preparation is we've got to stop and ask ourselves, Wait a minute, what am I thinking? I need to take charge of my soul. I need to say, honey, you're in charge. I need to get, take charge by doing a little meditation and being still and knowing this divine presence. Because when I do, I make a lot of changes within my world and my life. And it helps me get ready for the darkness. 
for any darkness to come. Now, isn't it wonderful? We here in our society, we're ready for the darkness. We have lights all across the black. We have fluorescent lights here. We've got lights hanging from the ceiling. We've got lights shooting up from the ceiling. We've got light coming down from the ceiling. We've got light everywhere. We've got windows galore bringing in light. We're so prepared in the physical realm. The question is, are we equally prepared in the spiritual realm? Have we ufanya tayari? Have we made ready? Are we ready for our heart being open? Or is our life being ready to complete, to hear and to listen? When the Spirit of God calls like a bridegroom, here I am to bless, do we even understand? And are we ready with clarity to receive and comprehend? You see, we've got work to do. And thank God, this is the season of preparation. This is the season. Let's make ready. Amen.